uh, the provost uh, referred to the uh, projects that um, Magic Leap has with the University of Miami at the moment. So, and I think a lot of people on the call are really interested in uh, how to integrate this technology potentially into higher education. Uh, I think you've explained how that might work at a school of medicine uh, or a school of nursing uh, pretty effectively. But uh, what, what, what about a college of arts and sciences? Uh, you know, how, how could a professor of literature, you know, or, or otherwise take virtual reality or augmented reality and uh, do something with it that would be pedagogically exciting. Yeah, it's interesting. I, you know, I think we'll continue to work on content for this device that can make various um, scenarios come to life. And, and, and rather than perhaps uh, say going to a play and seeing it once, you could play it again and again in your living room with the actual characters. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that can make various uh, areas of education come to life. Even now though, today with our product, we've engaged with a number of universities, again, calling us as we went into the pandemic, uh, particularly labs that really needed to be together to design something. So we like University of Washington has a reality lab. It's an AR VR reality lab. And they, while they had been using the devices, they hadn't been using them for their actual classroom. And once COVID started, they turned everything into interac interactive lectures um, as, as if they were back in a physical classroom. So the things that we, they were designing in the reality lab could continue uh, from, all over the world where the kids ended up going back when they went back home. Uh, so it's those sorts of things, any kind of 3D visualization, as I was saying, that uh, educators can take advantage of right now. But going forward, for instance, uh, you know, I talked about plays or reenacting historical, you know, uh, battles or whatever. You can you can imagine uh, with very good uh, 3D volumetric capture, so putting cameras uh, around people, you can, you know, you can see your favorite artist play again, watch your favorite play, watch a symphony in your living room. I think it can, it, it will have the opportunity and the ability to expand members of the audience. They, they can be there physically if they're in that town. If you're not in town to see the Miami Symphony, you can see it from the West Coast uh, using your augmented reality glasses. Um, and that technology is also fast developing, uh, this idea of volumetric capture. The, the limiting thing about it is, if you think about it, you have to have several cameras all the way around you. Um, you know, you don't wanna just have the face and nothing back there. You, you really wanna get the, just as if the human was standing there. And that generally takes a fair amount of bandwidth. And uh, you can imagine that just given that not everybody has that kind of bandwidth, the experiences might not be great. But if you're in an office environment, an educational environment, and you want to replay something, you largely will have the bandwidth. But those are the sorts of things that we have to deal with, like how to compress more, um, how to get the right camera angles that aren't uh, you, where you don't have to go to a special studio? Is there something we can just do in our homes that will allow us to be volumetrically captured and then, you know, teleported to whoever's watching? 